Acts 10 and Acts 11 are close to my heart. Both of them tell the story of how God blessed the outsiders of that time, the Gentiles. The Jews considered the Gentiles to be outsiders because they were unclean. They did not follow the Jewish law. But God spoke to Peter in a vision using symbols in a way that Peter could understand, kind of like a parable. Peter was a Jew and he knew that there were certain animals that were considered unclean that he was not supposed to kill and eat. Just like there were certain people that were considered unclean, the Gentiles who he was not supposed to associate with. In the vision, there were all different types of animals on the sheet, both clean and unclean. Peter realized that these animals represented different types of people, both Jews and Gentiles, the insiders and the outsiders, the clean and the unclean. Then God told Peter not to call profane or unclean what God had made clean. In other words, God said a revolutionary thing. The Jews and the Gentiles, the insiders and the outsiders, the clean and the unclean were welcome in the kingdom of God. And then God demonstrated this by blessing the outsiders the Gentiles, with the Holy Spirit, just as God had blessed the Jews during the Pentecost. So the question is, what is the Holy Spirit? In John 15, 7, Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit to be in close fellowship with us. In the Bible, the Greek word parakletos is used to describe the Holy Spirit as our advocate, our helper, our comforter, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and our standby. In my experience, the Holy Spirit can give us insight as we go about our day as we pray, or as we read the Bible. The Holy Spirit can fill us with peace when we are worried or grieving. The Holy Spirit nudges us when it would be good for us to say something or do something or call someone. The Holy Spirit can fill us with joy when we are praying or singing songs in church. The Holy Spirit can give us boldness to do something courageous or may give us wisdom when we're trying to solve a problem. And in Bible study this week, we imagined that the Holy Spirit could even be the light of God's love that shines through us. I remember the day an evangelist named Evelyn Shave preached about her own personal Acts 10 and 11 experience at my church in Houston, Texas. Her friend who was gay had invited her to a church service, which included people from the LGBTQ community. Evelyn was skeptical because she came from a conservative background. But the instant she stepped into that service, she could sense that the presence of God was there. And she could see that God was blessing the LGBTQ individuals in the service. She realized how similar her experience was to Acts 10 and 11. Evan, Evelyn called her husband crying. And from that day forward, she became an evangelist, preaching everywhere about the love of God for the LGBTQ community. I am grateful to Evelyn and her husband, Dennis. And I had wanted to say more about this, but something else was on my heart. 
I was thinking about the message of today's scripture, that God includes all people who are considered to be outsiders. God even includes us when we are acting like outsiders of God. When we don't follow God's law of loving our neighbor as ourselves, God even loves us when we hurt others. On Mother's Day, Pastor Heidi talked about God's mothering characteristics. I was thinking about God's mothering in the way of mercy. I imagined how God is like a mother who continues to love and hope the best for her child, even if they have gone off track, like in the story of the prodigal son. I once heard a story of a man who was on death row. Let's call him Brad. Brad was on death row because he had done terrible things in his life all because he didn't care about anyone. He said that in his entire life, no one had ever cared about him. So he never learned to care. But then as he sat on death row, he noticed a Christian man who would come every day to offer Christian publications. The Christian man continued to come to the prison day after day even though Brad rejected him day after day. After a while, Brad thought, this man must really care. This was Brad's first experience of being cared for and it changed his life. Brad decided to read about Jesus, open himself up to Jesus's love, and eventually he was even released from death row and began a new life. I can think of so many stories of redemption like this. We know from the Bible stories of Jesus that we have a God who loves us, like a mother loves her child, like a shepherd who rescues us when we are in trouble, always forgiving, always hoping, always wanting the best for us. I don't like to think of people as sinners because instead of seeing a sinner, I see a valuable, precious, loved person who is hurt. I wonder what might have happened to them that is causing them to behave that way. I see a person in need of mothering, love, and help. I have been reading about trauma in a powerful book called The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. After learning more about the effects of trauma, I understand even more why people act in hurtful ways. Our past hurts and trauma can cause us to do things that are hurtful to ourselves and others, especially when we are reminded of the trauma. These reminders can act as triggers that push us into fight or flight mode before we can even think about what is happening. It can even cause us to shut down, turning off our feelings so we don't feel the pain. But then that makes us makes it hard to feel love or joy either. I learned that a high percentage of our population has experienced trauma, whether it's from PTSD, child abuse, alcoholism, war, violence, concentration camps, accidents, poverty or systemic racism. And trauma's effects have even been found to pass down from one generation to the next. When we have experienced trauma, our body and our mind reacts with protective reactions that we developed during the time of trauma. I have often heard it said that hurt people hurt people. 
I love Acts 11 because it tells us that all people, even the outsiders, even those who have hurt others are loved. At the end of Acts 11, the Jews rejoiced that God had even given to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The Greek word for repent is teshuva, which means to continuously turn toward the light of God and receive a new beginning. I like this definition of repent. Turn toward the light of God for a new beginning. Knowing about the effects of trauma and knowing of God's great compassionate love for us helps us receive a new beginning. This knowledge helps us have mercy on ourselves and others. Instead of thinking, what's wrong with them? We can start thinking, what happened to them? And what do they need? Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's a prayer. Maybe it's just a safe place to share their story. This can start to change the story from hurt people, hurt people, to loved people, love people. And I think it's equally important to treat ourselves with the same mercy and compassion that we extend to others. Today's scripture tells us that God's kind, patient love for us is for everyone, not just for some, no matter what. Today, let us all turn, turn toward the light of God. Let us open ourselves up to receive God's love for a new beginning. And then, let us also go and shine God's light into the world as we share God's love with others. Let us be loved people who love people. Amen.